This is AHL Explains. I'm Anthony Ledford and today I'm going to explain optimization. Now there are three different types of optimization you will find in textbooks. There's temporal optimization, cross-sectional optimization and variational optimization. And it's only the cross-sectional optimization that we're going to look at today. Now any cross-sectional optimization problem contains these ingredients. There will always be decision variables there will always be an objective function and there will always be some region you're searching over. There may potentially be one or more constraints as well. The basic idea is to seek out values of the decision variables that make some objective function as beneficial as possible to you and to do that search over some region of space and if the constraints are there, furthermore, anything you call a solution has to satisfy these constraints as well. Now this defines a very challenging, hard set of problems to actually solve in general. For that reason, attention is focused on convex optimization. Now convex optimization problems are a subset of the more general class that can be solved reliably. When I say reliably, what I mean is that they can be solved in a reasonable amount of time or computational effort and you will get the right answer. If you want to see more details of the theory of convex optimization, look in Boyd and Vandenberg's book. It's available for free download on the internet. Now there are really two different ways in which optimization problems are typically solved. There's the algebraic approach or there's through numerical computation. We're going to do something different today and instead of looking at the algebraic or computational approach we're going to see what we can do to a problem using simple geometrical arguments. Okay so we're going to set up a two asset portfolio optimization problem and I'm going to keep track of the quantities I need in this table down here. So I'm going to have assets A and B with expected returns or mean returns given by MA and MB and I'm going to assume those are both greater than zero. They will have risk RA and RB respectively and by risk I mean their standard deviation and the correlation between these two assets will be rho. Now in order to set this up as an optimization I need to introduce decision variables and those are going to be my portfolio weights WA and WB. Now the portfolio expected return is therefore WA times MA plus WB times MB and the portfolio risk will be the square root of this expression that involves the individual risks and their correlation. Okay, now I've got what I need to set up the optimization problem. So what I'm going to do is choose weights WA and WB in order to maximize the portfolio expected return subject to the portfolio risk being constrained to be less than or equal to R lim. And the region I'm going to search over is WA greater than or equal to zero and WB greater than or equal to zero, i.e. I'm not going to allow any shorting in this portfolio. So let's draw out a set of axes now. Uh, this one is WA, this one's for WB, I have the origin here. The first thing to do is to note the region we're in. It says that both WA and WB are both greater than or equal to zero. So I'm in this quadrant. Anything outside that quadrant is illegal to me. The next thing I'm going to look at is the risk constraint. Well, this risk constraint actually corresponds to an ellipse. And I'm not going to draw the whole ellipse here. I'm just going to draw this section of it because I'm only interested in this quadrant. So any point on the inside or on the surface of this ellipse corresponds to a portfolio that satisfies this risk constraint. And anything that is outside that risk ellipse corresponds to a portfolio that will violate the risk constraint and is therefore illegal to us. The next thing I need to add is the objective function. And to do that, First, I need to add in the expected return information from my two assets. So I put MA here and I put MB here and draw these lines across and that leads me to this point out here. So in order to construct the objective function, first I need to draw this line from the origin and through that uh, expected return point. And then I need to draw a line that's perpendicular, i.e. at 90 degrees to that first line I've just drawn. Now this line here represents the objective function. 
And because I'm trying to maximize the objective function, maximize the return, what I'm interested in doing is keeping this line perpendicular to the first one, but pushing it as far as I can away from the origin. So let's just consider this version of the line here. Any point that's on this section inside the ellipse corresponds to a portfolio which doesn't violate the constraints. However, it's not the optimal portfolio because I can take the line and I can move it a little bit further and that gives me a better value of the objective function. So remember, I'm trying to push this line as far away as I can from the origin. If I push it too far though and I get it out to here, I've actually left my risk ellipse behind. There are no points on this line that intersect with my red ellipse here. So this line is no good because it violates the constraints. I've pushed it too far from the origin. OK, let's backtrack a bit. If I bring this line backwards now until it just touches the ellipse at this point here, then that actually represents the optimal portfolio. And my optimal weights, I can just read off from the horizontal and vertical axes. So my optimal weight in the A asset would be this value. Let's call it WA star and the optimal weight in the B asset would be this value. Let's call that WB star. Okay, that's all I want to say today about optimization. I hope this geometrical treatment has given you a different insight to what's going on. Thanks very much.